So guys, it's really cold today. Yeah, and I normally only light this back fire when it's freezing and it is absolutely freezing. So I'm gonna light it now. The secret to getting a good fire going is to get a good draw, get the chimney really hot. So I use loads of sticks and wood and that. And then when it's all roaring its knackers off, then I put the coal on. Yeah, so I'm gonna get this fire going now. God, it's bloody cold. Woohoo, and I'm in a t-shirt. I and mean, the reason I'm in the t-shirt is because the other part of the boat where my main fire is, it's bloody 32 degrees in there. But you come in here and it's cold. So let's get them both lit. There's nothing better after a freezing cold cruise coming back into a lovely warm boat. So let's get this engine started and crack on with today's adventure. So guys, I've got two thermal layers on and a coat and a jumper, yeah? I've got my coffee, my fire's going here, it's a bit smoky. Got two fires on, but standing here in this little hatch thing, it's lovely and warm. Yeah, it just gets smoke in your face. I wonder what those two cars are up to there. We often see this on the canals because sometimes there's a little bit of dogging going on. So I'm slowly making my way down the Langothlin guys. There are stoppages, but it does open in a few weeks time. So I'd rather get as close as I can to these stoppages and eventually in the next few days get towards Ellesmere to meet up with friends again. Yeah, you can do so long out the middle of nowhere and have a great time and just catch up on jobs and work, but then you're ready to mix and mingle again. But it'd be nice to get to Ellesmere, plus I do need to stock up on supplies. Got quite a bit of stuff on board, but it's all the fresh stuff, isn't it? Getting all the fresh stuff. And then after Ellesmere, who knows? Because there's still going to be a few weeks before the canal reopens. So once I get off the golly, I don't know where I'm going to go. Which canal do I go on to? I don't know. Yeah, but I've absolutely loved spending winter on this canal because there has been an absolutely amazing bunch of boaters. Oh, it's been great. I've loved it. Really have. And the good thing about this canal is it's less likely to freeze than most canals because it has the flow. Although it does freeze, which we have witnessed. So the aim of today's journey is to catch up with my friend Nikki and her boat. Yeah, we're both single-handers, so it makes sense to travel together. Now, she's told me she's at New Martin Locks. I'm not sure if she's at the top or the bottom, so I may have to do a couple of locks, but it'd be great to catch up. So I've decided, I've not seen Nikki, I don't know if she's further up there, there are some more boats or she's gone down the locks, but this is where I'm going to moor tonight. Look at this, I can see the hills over there with snow on. So this will do me. So as a single-handed boater, being on my own, I get off the stern of the boat. Yeah, I tend to reverse it into the position and then grab my centre rope and step off from here. If you do have a boat with crew, what tends to happen is they normally go in forwards and one of the crew members comes off. But I mean, you find your own ways of working, but as a solo boater, this is the best way for me. He's just coming in arse end first. <laughs> So guys, this is where I'm moored up. Look how beautiful this is. Yeah, I've got views both sides, which I absolutely adore. Yeah, there's just something about being in places like this when you look out your porthole in the morning or any time and you just see beautifulness. I just love it. I love being at nature, but I can't stay here too long, unfortunately, because I do need to get supplies. And the next big town is Ellesmere. But, oh, this will do for now, eh? Do for now. So 
So guys, we're still quite cold here in the UK. Yeah, it can get quite nippy on the old nips. Even the rum wench, she's cold this morning, let me tell you. But I've cruised all my way up this canal on my own, single handing all the locks, all the lift bridges. So it is nice having a friend now to cruise with on the way back down because we can help each other on the locks. So we're not climbing onto slippy roofs and things like that. So it would be a bit easier, a bit safer. Yeah, it has warmed up a little bit, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, it's warmed up from this morning. I did get the drone up to have a look and it was quite sort of frosted over a little bit, but I don't know if it captured it too well, but I'm now leaving the lovely snowy hills behind. Yeah, but I need water and I want to try and get as close to a town as I can because I do need supplies. And the thing is here, it's absolutely beautiful, but there's nothing. And even if you look from the air, there's, there's nothing nearby. <laughs> yeah, I should have planned it better, really. But that's the thing as a continuous cruiser, you need to plan. Yeah, you need to check your weather app, check, oh, I'm going to be frozen in for the next four days, or it's going to be really cold. I need to make sure that I'm somewhere where there's shops, and, and, and I didn't do that. So at the top of New Martin Locks is a water point. So I stopped there and whilst my boat was filling up with water, I went down to set the locks. Now it was so slippy guys, it was ridiculous. It really was. Now if I was on my own, there was no way that I would attempt to single hand the locks with it being this slippy. But because Nikki was going through the locks too, we decided to do the locks for each other. It was just so much safer. So whilst my boat was still filling with water, I set the lock for Nikki, yeah, so she could bring her boat in. So I then got her down the locks, and while she was mooring up, I reset the lock for me. There was no way today that I would have single-handed myself through these locks, because you're not only dealing with the muddiness that's very slippy, but also the ice. So it was really good that we could help each other through. like bullets today. <laughs> it's cold. Oh. I'm in my back cabin. Yeah, I thought I'd take you in there with me. I'm just going to show you one of the jobs that I've had to do, and I normally have to do this in winter, is I get my boards up and expose my rather large shaft. Yeah, and I've got a little bit of condensation. Nothing much. Um, a lot of boats do get condensation, and it tends to run from the front down to the backs, hence me being in my boatsman's cabin. Um, so what I tend to do is... Right there. I buy, you can use tenor ladies, puppy pads, whatever you want, but I buy nappies, yeah, cheap babies nappies, and just put it down on the floor underneath just to absorb the moisture. Yeah, a little bit of a damp patch. Yeah, so luckily my boards are quite easy to lift up because they're just right down the middle in the boatsman's cabin. Yeah, and you expose all the shaft and you can just get underneath it, so it's quite easy. But some of it's not from condensation, it's just a little bit of moistness, a little bit of dampness. But some of it is when I'm cruising, I have to have my side hatches open in my engine room because my engine's air cooled. And also to access these controls, my throttle, my wheelie thing and my, this one here, my gears, my big thruster. In order to access them, I have to have my hatch open all the way. So if it's raining, 
the rain does drop in. Yeah, so just now, whilst it's winter, I can just get it all tidied up. Yeah, you've got to stay on top of things, haven't you, with your boats? Yeah, so tenor ladies, puppy pads, baby's nappies, anything like that, just to absorb all that moistness, those drips. Yeah, and it keeps it nice, keeps your bilges nice and dry. So guys, it's still icy here. Got ice underneath my feet. So before I set off today, the towpaths this side were moored, which means I can access these blobs on my boat. Yeah, these were little rust patches and I did treat them, but obviously not good enough. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna sand them back, put some cure rust on. Yeah, because for the next few weeks now, we're gonna be moored the other side. Yeah, so it just means I can get a bit of protection on. So I've got the old, the old jackery out. Yeah, I've had it ages now, this. I bloody love it. I do love it because it's just everything. It controls all my power tools. Yeah, not them ones, don't be rude. <laughs> Terps now, I'm just clean that off and then I'm gonna put some cure rust on it. Get rid of all the shite. Got all them layers of paint. So then I'm just using this Cure Rust. I've got no um, paintbrushes, so I'm just going to dab it on a bit of this and plonk it on. Yeah, probably why it knackered last time. Oh, there we go. So I've got the Cure Rust on now, and then I need to get a sort of primer undercoat on it in the next few hours, but I am going to cruise, so I just have to hope that I can be somewhere where I can access this side, otherwise we're walking down the gunnels just to plonk a bit of summer on it to protect it. Oh. I do need to move because I've got no internet and I need some supplies because I've got now in for tea. And there she is, my favourite bridge. Oh. Yes, yeah, so guys, the joys of being a continuous cruiser. Yeah, we have to keep moving, move every two weeks. During the season, I'm moving all the time. But in winter, we choose a canal to winterize on because of canal lock closures and stoppages, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, so a lot of us chose Langothan because it has this flow and we've had such a water shortage last year. It was horrendous. Everywhere was short of water and none of us wanted to get grounded and stuck on places like that. So a lot of people came up here, which has been fantastic. I can't get off this canal until the open Grindley Brook and Hurlston. And I've just been taking my time, slowly get all the way up and slowly making my way down. But that's what I love about being a continuous cruiser. You don't have to move miles, you don't have to go far. In the summer, I do lots of cruising normally and go really, really far when there's no stoppages and water shortages. But in the winter, yeah, you just plod along and I love that. I love that I can stay somewhere for a week, two weeks, get to know people, go exploring. Yeah, boating for me is not about racing and doing as much as the country as possible. It's about the people I meet and the little adventures I have. Guys, a lot of people say to me, Heidi, why don't you wear gloves when you're cruising? Well, I, I do, but I can't turn the camera on and off and I can't check my phone. So I tend to have my hands in my pockets and I cruise with my elbow. Yeah, unless it's a tricky bit and I have to get my hand out. But yeah, I tend to do it like that. Yeah, I'm warm, I'm warm enough. I've been warmer on, haven't I? The first thing I'm going to do when I'm all up today is get this boatsman's cabin fire lit. Yeah, I haven't been lighting it every night because I'm trying to save on coal, basically. The price of coal at the moment is bloody ridiculous. 
and my main cabin fire is going 24 7 and that's where I spend most of my time I only come in here really to sleep but yeah I really should light it I have been lighting it when it's been minus to keep that boatswain's cabin toasty warm but not when it's like two or three degrees and I should really so I'm going to get that lit there has been some nights when it's been so cold I have actually slept on my sofa I took my quilt in yeah because it was so warm in there but when you do cruise the engine does warm up this boatswain's cabin but it will go cold by the time I go to bed so I'll get that lit yeah get it lit so guys it's that time now I'm looking for somewhere to warm up oh February can be so bloody cold it really can Ooh, I think it's colder than it was in bloody December yeah, so I'm looking now for somewhere to moor up because I can't go. Nipples are about to drop off. So Ellesmere is only a five, ten minute walk around that bend, but we've been told that it's full of boats. So we're trying to moor up here because I don't like where it's too windy. And uh, yeah, it's very shallow. And we're both trying to get in. But this is the joys of having deep drafted boats. Yeah, you really struggle to moor up sometimes, but I'd rather be here out the way than quite busy for now. As long as I can walk to the post box and get some supplies. But in a few days, I will go and move into Ellesmere for the space. Ooh, numb lips, Ooh, top ones. So guys, I've just currently moored up here. It's so bloody muddy. I'm covered in mudges. Yeah, from my ropes and stuff. Nikki was there, but she just couldn't get her arse in either. So she's now trying to reverse to go behind me. Yeah, well that's how far close I am to the bank. Bloody miles away. But at least my front's in, so I can get on and off the front. It'll do for now. It's so bloody cold. I'm not going any further. If I go around the bend and get to Ellesmere and there is no space, I'm buggered. So yes, yeah, so I'd just rather stay here. Oh. Yeah, so, sorry, I've got my washing hanging up there. <laughs> Did my washing earlier. I just filled up my coal bucket because I keep my coal on the roof. Yeah, it's really wet. Look at that! It's filthy. That's just from lifting up the bloody bag. Yeah, so I've got some coal. It's fire roaring, eh? <laughs> hey guys, excuse me looking a bit rough. Yeah. Ooh, bloody hell. That's what it's got to look at this sunset out here now. Hopefully it'll capture it. Look at the sky. How awesome is that? This is why, guys, this is why I live on a boat, because I just love stuff like that. But it's gorgeous. <laughs> so, guys, I've come to Ellesmere today because it's my birthday. Yeah, and I've met up with some other boaters. And my mum and dad have come as well, and we're going to go to the pub. <laughs> Cheers. So I had a lovely time with the boaters for my birthday. Yeah, I got loads of presents. This is one of them. Yeah. I only drink on days that start with a T. Tuesday, Thursday, today, tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday, and the other day. That's pretty brilliant. Everyone was just lovely. I got some flowers. Now I got this. Let me show you this. This was for my friends, Caroline and Jill. Yeah, they're my road trippers friends, friends that I go away with when we go camping and do the festivals. And it's a waistcoat. Right, but it's got a difference. It's got this silver insulated layer and it also has a battery pack and it heats up. Yeah, I can heat it up. Oh, hopefully 
is that? But I've not tried it yet. I'm going to try it over the next few days. But yeah, I can heat up and be warm. I mean, that'll keep your nipples warm. But talking of nipples, my friends Julian Martin, they got me these. And these are hand warmers. Two hand warmers and you click them to activate. Well, I'm going to be putting them down my bra. Yeah. And I got, oh, I just got some brilliant presents. And one of them from my friends Caroline and Pete, they got me a kid's book. But this book is pirate stories. I'm going to start reading you little passages from that. Yeah, we'll probably do one at the end of this video. Anyway, I'm off to my mum's because um, she's going to do me a little family gathering as well. So guys, I've come to my mum and dad. Yeah, my mum's done a little bit of a spread. Mum, you're a good one, aren't you? I'm not good. Thank you. Aww. Now she's been baking. She's put a joint of no, gammon on. I haven't been You've got them sausage rolls. Oh, she knows I like a good yeah. sausage. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> So it was really lovely celebrating with my close family, my brother, my nieces and nephews. And the kids brought over the latest toy to show their nanny, which is my mum. But you know what it's like with these oldens trying to get to grips with technology. <laughs> oh, but just a fantastic time had by all. Go on, Kel, show us how you eat that, love. Show, show us how you eat that. Hip, hip. Jolly good fellow. Say nipples. Nipples. I can't believe you just said nipples anti pet. So, guys, I've brought you in today through the back doors. Yeah, in my boatsman's cabin. And this is the book that I got off Pete and Caroline. Yeah. Pirates love underpants. I've got myself a nice little dead man's fingers rum. Yeah, so cheers. Hmm. That's nice, that. That's nice. Anyway, so I thought what I'm going to do is I'm going to read you a passage, yeah, from this book. And then what I'm going to do is ask you each week to send me in something to read. Yeah, it's got to be piratey. Yeah, so let's start off shall we he's sitting comfortably yeah got yourself a drink here we go these pirates so love underpants they're on a special quest to find the fabled pants of gold for the captain's treasure chest it's brilliant isn't it so i want you guys to send me in a little pirate story just like that that i can start to read each week i might do a little bit of a segment where we're coming here Come in the back entrance and yeah, so and read a little story. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna leave the video here for this week. If you have enjoyed it, please do give me a big thumbs up. Yeah, it really helps. Subscribe if you haven't already. But before I go, I just want to say what massive thank you to this week's pirate crew. And here they are, my heart is. We've got Bubby and Guppy, David and Hay. Richard and Helen from Narrowboat Maggie, Lane and Larry from California, Alan Harbit, Norman Laura Vandal Handel, Lonnie Johnson, thank you so much, Lonnie, I really appreciate your support, Donnie T, Tartan Tammy, David L, Sal and Al, Mark Grunenberg, Nigel from Thoughts on Narrowboating, John and Linda, one Al to another, and Captain Glenn. Thank you again so much, Glenn. And also a massive shout out to my patrons for their continued support. And we have a nice little vibe on the Patreon page. So thank you so much for that, guys. Anyway, that's it. So please stay safe, take care, and I'll see you next week.